welcome to Boomer and Senior Travel. I'm your host, Debbie Gerber. One of the really great projects, I thought, because I love to see people work their way up or improve their life, is that they had a school there that was about teaching people crafts or skills, vocations, but more in the craft area, music, arts, that kind of thing. This school had, they allowed people to come and you would get into the school and they would teach you this trade, at which point when you graduated you could go out and sell your crafts. Uh, I thought it was a marvelous program. They had a whole music program. The ages were widely varied from adult down to children that would come and learn at these centers. There was a music center. They did beading. They did ceramic crafts. They did painting. There were all kinds of things. They had an instructors that would teach them. And then they also had a gift shop there where they could sell their wares. Of course, we bought something because you want to help the people. One of the things that you learn as a traveler, if you're going to travel, if you will buy things from the local people, it does help their economy. Tourism in most other countries is a prime source of income for the people. We bought the cutest little warthog. He was made out of beads. Things that are foreign to us are very common in other countries. We would go along and on the sides of the streets, there were street vendors and they were cooking out in the open. So their meat would sit out in the heat of the day and just sit out in the open until they got to cooking it. That for them is normal. For us, most of us would have a panic attack about that if we had to sit our meat out and chop it up out in the open and have flies on it and you know it just sounds gross and then they would cook it and they would serve it you might not want to eat at the street vendors at some of these places but it was interesting to see their lifestyle how they would even there was even a woman who was blind and very old and she was still able to help with cooking and running one of these food booths. Anywhere you go in the world, it's all about supply and demand. The ladies were cooking chickens out on the street to sell, and then there was this lady bringing a cart full of chickens to the ladies to kill, pluck, and cook. So it all happened in that area, supply and demand, Somebody brings the chickens and makes money that way. Somebody, you know, kills them and plucks them and gets them ready. And somebody cooks them and somebody buys them. So uh, it's a circle. And, you know, you can see it anywhere you go. But it's really kind of fun just to go and see some place in the world where you actually see a happening on a person-to-person -person rather than business, you know, big businesses doing it. It was really an interesting thing. I love the dogs. They were always around. Uh, they must some be pets, I'm sure, but there they were waiting for a scrap, for somebody to give them something they couldn't get for themselves. One of the interesting things that we did on the bus tour is they had a fellow join us that lived in the apartment complexes. This is the first step up before a house. So the people would go from their villages or refugee from another country to the shanty towns. From the shanty towns, they could move up when they could afford it to a multifamily apartment. Now, I'm talking about this apartment had three bedrooms and had five families living in it together. They would pull their money and then live in this apartment. Again, there's so many thousands of people millions of people that are in these circumstances that keeping things up is very difficult. They are just so grateful to actually be in a building. They still in this one had no running water. They did have power and they did have televisions, but they did not have running water. So they would gather the water, bring it in, do their wash and cooking in the kitchen, and then take it and hang it outside the laundry. They ate together. They had their separate bedrooms and areas for sleeping. 
some areas they would make into like a living area during the day and then pull bedrolls out at night. Some of them, if they could afford it, would have their own rooms uh, with a bed in it. Very interesting conditions. And then they all shared a bathroom. This was a step up. And then from there, when they could afford it, then they could get into a single house. It was quite a thing for this fellow. The fellow that took us on this tour, and this was his building or his apartment unit that he lived in, he had met some people from Europe that had been on a tour where he had been explaining in English about how people move up in the housing. And these people had, he wanted to be a tour guide. He was very good at explaining it. And so they sent him, they paid for him to go to school to be a travel agent. He went to school. He was still in the process of going to school when he was taking us on a tour. And again, there's levels of being able to do tours. He used to just, you know, try to get people off the street to be able to take them on a tour. Then he was able to get with the bus tour company and have them take him around and let him ride the bus and then take us into places. He would arrange places for us to go visit. And the next thing he wanted to do was open an actual travel agency, all due to someone deciding to help him make his life better. We met another fellow who was in a similar circumstance where someone had helped him and he was going to start a beauty salon. Now beauty salons are very, very popular there. They do a lot of hair braiding and hair fixing and uh, like where we come from, people want to go to the beauty salon and, they, and he could see that as a way to work himself up to be able to work in one and own one and that was his goal. So people have goals all over the world and they are working at accomplishing them. As we drove along, even in these little shanty towns, God still was there. The people believed they had their own little church there. I was just almost brought to tears by that. I thought that was wonderful. Their houses do have, they use a lot of uh, solar power uh, for their heating and for the things for water heating, for their water heating, they use solar, which I thought was a neat thing. We d we went to visit one of the shanty towns. We were taken on a tour. We were taken into one of the family's little houses, little shacks, and we were able to go in. Inside of there, they had the most amazing, it was a bag. It was um, an advertisement from a company on a sack and they had hung it up to help them remember some of their goals. I loved it. They made beer. Homemade beer is what they made and sold. And so when we went there, they took us in and they put us in, they brought in all kinds of little containers for us to sit on and took us inside and then they brought in this pail of beer and put it in the center and those that wanted to have some and then give a donation could do that was really interesting. One of the really great things I thought, my sister and brother-in-law had brought one of their suitcases. They had brought things for this village, uh, the shanty town area that we were going to visit. They brought a suitcase with, for, with things for children. They had brought uh, blankets and toys and books, uh, you know, as much as they could get for the weight in order to give us gifts. They gave those out, and the people were so excited, and they were so orderly, kind. Um, they would come and get one gift and then leave. I thought how special that was, both for uh, my brother and sister-in-law to have done that and for the people to be so sweet at receiving those gifts. It was, it was really quite an emotional experience for all of us to watch. I, I, one of the things I wondered, because the little shanty house was just one room, it was just three walls with a blanket on the front, basically, was where do they go to the bathroom? Well, I found out as we went to leave that there was a whole row of outhouses. And I mean, it's a long row of outhouses. And that's where if you live in the shanty towns and you need to go to the bathroom, you have to leave your house and walk to 
the outhouses to use the restroom. The little house that we went into was nothing more than a few boards put together to hold up the side walls, cardboard covering the walls, and then over the roof it was some kind of a tarp or canvas that had been pulled up and attached to the top. In the center of the room was a, some rocks with a piece of metal where they would put a uh, bucket that they then could burn a fire in and that is what kept the room warm. As we came they took that outside so that we no one would get burnt but because it's chilly there they wear lots of layers of clothing and then this is how they kept warm. Even in the shanty towns most of the areas had some form of electricity. Not all the little places had them but it looked like that power did come into the area. The children again were a really fun thing. As we would get on and off the buses, they would congregate around the bus hoping that someone would give them um, some change, toy, a candy, something from the Taurus. They recognized that uh, they could get something for them or their family by being so dang cute. Anywhere you travel in the world, the children are what capture your attention. They are happy. They don't see circumstances as being a problem. They find their own toys, make their own games, make up things to do. Children are resilient. They are happy in their environment as long as they are loved. Right next to the shanty towns, you could see the government houses that had been built. The power lines were everywhere there. The houses did have electricity and running water in the little houses, but you would go right from the shanty towns where they had nothing right to the government housing. They're building it right there where the people are so that they can just move over but stay in the same communities.